Hello, my name is Joel Z. Williams. People in my neighborhood call me the poor people's advocate. Today I want to talk about three main issues. I want to um, reveal some new updates to the trap. I want to talk about bed bug dots. And I want to talk to you about three major uh, research papers that I've read that I think can have uh, a potential benefit for your traps. All right, let's start out with the improvements. Um, uh, a gentleman in Toronto, Canada named Kevin uh, has given me some tips that I th I'd like to pass on to you. Now, I think you're familiar with uh, the trap that, and lure that we call the gold medal. This is the, using the two liter bottle. You're going to put your e sugar, yeast, water mixture in there. Uh, you're going to use some tubing. Uh, Kevin has told me that this tubing, you can get aquarium tubing for airline tubing for aquariums uh, much cheaper and it's, it's easy, uh, it's, it's more pliable. Sometimes this one has a metal coat hanger in it to give it that that uh, directional, uh, but what Kevin is, is saying that the lighter, thinner airline tubing will work just as effectively. It's more, uh, you, it's, you can find it any pet supply place. It's, it's uh, easier to find, it's cheaper, and it's more pliable. Now, um, I want to talk about the athletic tape here. Uh, here is a picture of that two inch athletic tape. You can get this at Dollar General for about $2 a roll. It makes a really good ramp uh, for, for bed bugs because bed bugs will can crawl along the floor and they can their their claws can adhere to that fabric now earlier we talked about the overlap in the cup and I think it would be prudent to have maybe a quarter of an inch overlap I don't know what that works out in metric probably three centimeters um, but have some overlap so that the bed bugs when they crawl over they will they will gravity will take them and and uh, they'll wind up in the pitfall okay so that's the uh, second improvement now the, uh, I had a viewer uh, talk about the mixing the yeast and the sugar together in, as a powder before you add it to your water she said that that made it easier to mix and it distributed it through the fluid uh, uh, promoted more distribution throughout the, the water so those are the three updates I want to talk about. Um, now let's talk about the bed bug dots. Now this is uh, Denise Donovan. She's the director of the International Bed Bug Resources Authority. She sent me her bed bug dots, okay? Now I'm going to tell you up front that this is not going to capture or kill any bed bugs. What it's used for is to identify that, that there is the presence of bed bugs in your apartment. And so what you get in this box you're going to get 24 of these little discs and hold them up here so you can see them. Uh, and on the back is a, a little adhesive strip. Now, I don't know if you can see it really good, but there's a little white margin here. Yeah, there you go. Now, when, when bed bugs, when they feed, they become full, when they become fully engorged, uh, the pressure of the, all that blood in them pushes out the excrement of the old blood that was in them. So this, this is why when you are looking at bed bug infested home, you can one of the telltale signs is the vertical brownish rusty colored lines that will be uh, trailing after they feed on you. They're going to be dragging that heavy abdomen that's swollen with blood, pushing out that fecal matter, and this because of the the white rim, you're going to see really quickly uh, the bed bugs are in here. Now in, in the interior, it's like an Oreo cookie if you will, in the interior are some really specially fluted uh, cardboard. Now they, they've, they've worked on that design to find a uh, diameter that bed, bed bugs prefer. They like to wedge themselves into tight places and so this, this will let you know this is a good way to get a visual representation early on in your infestation and that's critical because once bed bugs uh, set up shop uh, the longer they're there the harder they are to eradicate and the more damage they can do all right so bed bug dots again this is the first step of the Williams method the Williams method now contains five steps and so uh, bed bug dots I think it sells for 20 bucks you can get it I'm gonna put the link in the info section you should always have these around even if you don't have bed bugs yet this is a good way to, to see if you have them now let's talk about the studies one of the things that I think is important is that we constantly keep updating with new information and new things that, are, that we're learning um, I looked at three major studies one from the University of Lund in, in Sweden 
one from the University of Sheffield in England, and then the last one was from Rutgers University in New Jersey here in America. Now, the one in Sweden I thought was very interesting because it talked about the bed bugs antenna and their ability to sense uh, CO2, heat, and other things. And I thought it was really interesting. I wanted to show you this, this photo, and I'll, I'll draw your attention to it as soon as I can pull it up on my tablet. My uh, printer is down, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do it the old fashioned way. But I want you to see their antenna here. Now the, the plural of antenna is, is, is antennae. So there's 44 antenna, uh, olfactory sensilla, I should say, on each of these antenna. Very, very sensitive too, I might add. Now, what the, what the study in Sweden, did, they didn't discover that. That had been already discovered in 1976 by a team called uh, Reinhardt and Mueller. They had already discovered that they had the 44 sensilla. What this study did is it wanted to track down and see just how sensitive they were. And wh one of the things that I found was telling in this study is that bed bugs are able to detect the change in temperature to one or two centigrade. That's how sensitive they are. Now let's tie that together with the other study out of uh, this is Singh and Wang out of Rutgers. What, what I thought was interesting about that study is they were looking at attractants. They were looking at things to draw bed bugs to a CO2 trap. They tried a wide variety of, of chemicals, spearmint oil, coriander oil, uh, something called donol, uh, oxyhedylin, all these different form, formations and, and uh, 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 combinations of chemicals. And one of the things that they found is that bed bugs will go non-directional as soon as they sense CO2. Now, I wanted to talk about uh, something that happened to me yesterday. We're, we're coming up on the 4th of July. There's a lot of people doing barbecue. I was at a barbecue yesterday and they had a dog. They had a, a golden retriever, uh, a Labrador retriever. And uh, one of the things I thought was really interesting is comparing animal behavior to this insect behavior because I, I thought this was real telling. Now, the host was, was grilling hot dogs and hamburgers, right? And before he brought the meat out and started the grill, uh, we're playing with the dog. We're throwing the tennis ball. The dog is all into playing and whatnot. As soon as the owner brings out the grill and, and starts putting the charcoal in the grill, lights it up, the dog goes stationary. The dog sits up probably 10 feet away from the barbecue grill and just kind of hangs out there, doesn't, doesn't move. He's no longer interested in the playing with the ball or anything like that. And then, of course, as we get the, the meat grilled and the, the owner is, is moving the meat to the, to the uh, plate, the dog just literally starts shaking literally just starts moving and shaking. You know, he's excited. And the owner, of course, flips him a burger and the dog eats the burger. Now, the, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I think bed bugs, it, it, one of the, what I found in the study was really, really fascinating, especially the one from Sheffield, because what it suggested was that when bed bugs detect CO2, they start going non-directional searching. They can't, they know there's a meal out there, but they don't know exactly where it's at, right? And when they get to what the study said was about 1.5 meters away, they start looking for heat and caramones, which are body odors, right? And uh, from the host. So sweat is one of the uh, best body odors to, to detect a human. If you're Cemex lectularis, if you're the one that feeds on human, then you're looking for human scent. And what a lot of people don't realize is that your earwax is a form of sweat. It's, a, it's cre secreted by a sebaceous gland, but it's very, very aromatic to bed bugs. They can detect that very well. And in fact, the study showed that the uh, bed bug rostrum, the actual feeding mechanism, the, the uh, beak, if you will, the, feed, the mouth part, uh, will actually extend. It will, it, it will have this effect where just like the dog was shaking and salivating, the bed bug will lower its rostrum. And it, it, I, I have this corkscrew as a demonstration, but it, it will literally extend its proboscis almost in anticipation of feeding. Okay, so it, 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 it's seeking CO2 all the time, but as it gets close and it can detect heat and it can smell that sebaceous fluid, that, that sweat, that dried sweat, it really is coming, all right? Now, what, the reason, the whole point I'm, I'm going to this lengthy explanation 
is because for net, from uh, day one, we've been talking about using the, the trap and lure pitfall, right? We've been talking about that combination. Now, what I want to do is that if you're going to build multiple of these, I, want, I would like to see if you could test one. I want to see if this is going to work. I want to use this technology to our advantage, this research to our advantage. A Q-tip in your ear, swab it around, get some earwax on that, and put that in the middle of your pitfall. If you're building two traps, only do it to one. I want to see if, if the study from, uh, actually I think that was uh, the one out of Sheffield. I want to see if there's something to that. If we can, if we can find out that earwax is, is going to be the best attractant, we've got them whooped. Because everybody has earwax and it's free for everyone. All right, so that's what I want to try. Um, please post your comments onto the site. Now I want you to know this is a collaborative effort. I'm looking for people to help out with special projects. I have a project where I want to replace this flag on the wall. I'd like to put a map of, of the world and we'll put a pin for everyone who successfully defeated bed bugs using these methods. So I need somebody, a, a designer of some kind to come up with an idea for that. I'd like to get a graphic artist. I want someone who can draw. A lot of the people that watch my videos are illiterate. They, they, don't under, they can't read or they don't speak my language. So I'd like, it, I'd like to have something where it, it'd be simple, easy steps showing how to create the trap. One, two, three, you know, step one, step two, step three. If you'd be willing to, to volunteer some time, you could help thousands of people. All right. Uh, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to go over the million view mark. I think we're sitting right around 700,000. Thank you guys so much for supporting. Again, my name is Joel Z. Williams. I am the poor people's advocate. You will recognize me by my white hat, but you'll know me by my virtuous ways. Thank you.